In this video, we're going to talk about how to graph equations. Let's start with linear equations. So what we have here is a linear equation in slope intercept form. That is, it's in y equals mx plus b format. m, the number in front of x, represents the slope, which is 2 in this example. b is the y-intercept. So in this problem, we see that the slope is 2, the y-intercept is 3. A quick and simple way to graph a linear equation in this format is you want to plot the y-intercept first, which is at 3 along the y-axis. So going up 1, 2, 3, that's the point 0, 3. So that's the y-intercept. Now we could use the slope to get the next point. The slope is 2. And the slope is equal to the rise over the run. 2 is the same as 2 over 1, by the way. So what we're going to do is we're going to rise 2 units from the y-intercept. And we're going to run 1 unit to the right. This will give us our next point. And so all you need is two points to graph a linear equation. So that's how we can plot the equation y equals 2x plus 3. Now let's try another example. So here we have the linear equation y equals negative 3 over 4 times x plus 5. So the first thing we need to do is identify the slope. The slope is going to be the number in front of x. So the slope in this example is negative 3 over 4. So the rise is negative 3, the run is 4. The y-intercept is 5. So we have the point 0, 5. The y-intercept is basically the y-value of the graph when x is 0. So let's plot the y-intercept first. So that's at 0, 5. Now we need to use the slope to get the next point. So the rise is negative 3, which means that we're going to go down 3 units, and the run is 4. So we're going to travel 4 units to the right. And so we're going to get the point 4, 2. And now all we need to do is connect the two points with a straight line, and that line wasn't straight. Let's do that again. Okay, so that's my uh, rough sketch of this particular line. So that's how you can graph a linear equation that looks like this in slope intercept form. Now, how can we graph the linear equation 2x minus 3y is equal to 6? Well, this is not in slope intercept form. It's in standard form. That is, it's in ax plus by equals c format. One of the best ways to graph an equation in this format is to find the x and y intercepts. To find the x intercept, replace y with 0 and solve for x. Negative 3 times 0 is 0, so that disappears. So we get 2x is equal to 6. Divide on both sides by 2, we get x is equal to 3. So we have the point 3 comma 0 because we replace y with 0. This is x, this is y. Now let's do the same thing for the y-intercept. So this time we're going to replace x with 0, and we're going to solve for y. 2 times 0 is 0, so we're going to get negative 3y is equal to 6. And then dividing both sides by negative 3, we get y is equal to negative 2. So the y-intercept is 0, negative 2. Now all we need to do is plot the x and y-intercept. So the x-intercept is 3, 0. At this point, x is 3, y is 0. The y-intercept is 0, negative 2, which is here. And then all you need to do is connect the two points with a straight line, and that's it. Now what if we have a parabolic function or a quadratic function like this one? Let's say that y is equal to x squared. How can we graph it? Well, it helps to know the parent shape of x squared. x squared looks like a parabola. 
So this is a rough sketch of y is equal to x squared. Now, what about, let's say we have y is equal to x squared minus 4. This graph has been shifted 4 units down the y-axis. So instead of starting at the origin, it's going to start at negative 4. 4 units down. And then you can just draw a rough sketch of that graph. So that's the shape of this graph. It's simply been shifted 4 units down. Now, if we had y is equal to x squared plus 3, it would start at 3, and then it would open upward. Now, let's say if we have y is equal to x minus 2 squared. So this graph is shifted 2 units to the right, and then it's going to open. Now, what if we have x plus 3 squared minus 2? So this tells us that it shifted left 3 units, and this tells us that it shifts down 2 units. For the part that's inside of the parentheses, the reason why it's left 3 is because if you set x plus 3 equal to 0 and you solve for x, you'll get negative 3. So even though it says plus 3, it's not shifted 3 to the right. It's actually shifted 3 to the left. So let's find the new origin point. It's going to be 3 units to the left, and it's going to be down 2 units. So it's at negative 3, negative 2. And then we'll draw the parabola. Now, if we had a negative sign in front of this parabola, let's see if I could fit it there. Instead of opening upward, it's going to open downward. So that's how you can graph y equals x squared whenever you have uh, transformations and vertical and horizontal shifts. So this is a horizontal shift because it was shifted left 3. This is a vertical shift because it was shifted down 2. And the negative sign is basically a reflection over the x-axis. Now one thing I do want to mention is that for those of you who want more example problems on how to graph linear equations, quadratic functions, and even other type of functions like the absolute value function, rational functions, radical functions, exponential, logarithmic functions, for those of you who want help graphing those types of problems, check out the links in the description section below of this video. I'm going to be posting links to those videos where you can uh, get that information that you need. So feel free to take a look at that when you get a chance. Now let's work on some harder examples. So let's say we want to graph y is equal to x squared minus 6x plus 8. So here we have a quadratic function, but we can't use transformations to get the answer. What do we do in this case? What I recommend doing is factoring the trinomial for this type of problem. To factor this trinomial, we need two numbers that multiply to 8, but add to the middle coefficient, negative 6. So this is going to be 2 and 4, but negative 2, negative 4. Negative 2 times negative 4 multiplies to positive 8, but add to negative 6. And so we can write it as x minus 2 and x minus 4. Now, we could find the x-intercepts by setting y equal to 0. And using the zero product property, we could set each factor equal to zero because zero times anything is zero. And we could solve for x. So this gives us our two x-intercepts at x equals 2 and at x equals 4. The vertex is the midpoint between those two points. So the axis of symmetry is going to be right in the middle between the two intercepts. So the AOS, or axis of symmetry, is x equals 3. That's where the vertex is going to be located. Another way in which you could find the axis of symmetry and the x-coordinate of the vertex, it's negative b over 2a. By the way, the vertex is simply this point of the parabola. 
A is the number in front of x squared, B is the number in front of x, and C is the other number. So in this example, we have negative, negative 6 over 2 times 1. So two negatives will change into a positive, and 6 divided by 2 is 3. So that gives us the axis of symmetry and the x-coordinate of the vertex. So you have two ways of figuring that out. Now, what do we do at this point? Well, when graphing quadratic functions, it's very helpful to make a table. And to make the process simpler, you want to center your table around a vertex. The x-coordinate of the vertex is 3, and the intercepts are 2 and 4, which I'm going to put here. So I'm going to get one more number on either side of the vertex. So that's going to be 1 and 5. And you want to make sure that they're equally distant from the vertex. The reason for this is due to the symmetry of the graph, the y values will be the same. The y values of the x-intercepts 2 and 4 are both 0. Now let's calculate the y value when x is 3. And I'm going to use the factored form of this equation to get the answer because it's easier that way. So when x is 3, this is going to be 3 minus 2 times 3 minus 4. 3 minus 2 is 1. 3 minus 4 is negative 1. So y is going to be negative 1. Now what about when x is 5? It's going to be 5 minus 2 times 5 minus 4. This is 3. This is 1. So we get positive 3. Now due to the symmetry of the graph, when x is 1, y will be 3 as well. And you could check it. If you plug in 1 minus 2 times 1 minus 4, you're going to get negative 1 times negative 3, which is positive 3. So that's the reason you want to center your data table around the vertex, is because these two points will be the same, and the y value of those two points will be the same. So now let's plot everything. The vertex is at 3, negative 1. And then we have the point 5, 3, which is here. And then the point 1, 3. And then let's try to connect these dots. And so that's how you can graph a quadratic function in this form. For those of you who want to know how to graph it, let's say if it's not factorable, I do have other videos on that topic. So I'm going to post it in the links below. Feel free to take a look at that when you get a chance. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching.